Welcome back to the wood shop. Today I'm going to show you how to apply a skin to a cornhole board. And right away you might be saying that doesn't look like a normal cornhole board. And that's because it's not. This one actually rotates on a uh, barbecue motor. I have another video that I show how to make these. And if you haven't seen that yet, I'll put a link up here or down in the description. But I'm not going to get into that. We're just talking about putting the skin on. So whether this is a rotating cornhole board or just a regular one, I'm going to show you the steps of how to get a decal applied to the surface here. So surface prep is really important. So what I've done to it so far is applied a coat of polycrylic. But before applying the poly, I made sure to fill in any voids. Let's see if I can find some here. I know there are some. Yeah, up here, filled that all in. Got it sanded smooth. So any anywhere there's little gaps or divots, anything like that, any imperfections in the surface, you want it super smooth and, and all uniform before putting a decal on. All along this gap here, this is a mitered frame and the plywood is recessed into it. So anywhere there was a little gap, I put in some epoxy filler and got that all sanded smooth. And now I've applied this polycrylic and we're gonna go ahead and sand that to 400 grit sandpaper. Nice and smooth. So I've got a flat sanding block and a contoured sanding sponge for, for curves. Just using a really light touch I'm not trying to remove much material, I just want to make sure there aren't any bumps or ridges from brushing on the polycrylic. It's okay to go across the grain because the grain is not going to show up. We just want to make sure that everything's nice and smooth. Now I got it all sanded. Just go ahead and run your hands over. Your fingers can feel any little imperfections and divots and things that your eyes can't see. So go over the whole thing and make sure you got it all. All the voids are filled in. It's all smooth to the touch. No ridges or bumps because those will show through the vinyl sticker. You want as smooth as you can possibly get it. All right, then I'm gonna go ahead and vacuum that off. Then I'm gonna use a tack cloth to make sure I got all the dust off of it. And then for this one, I wanna make sure that my circle is centered in the hole. I'm gonna even go so far as to line up the wood grain as best I can. The pattern on the wrap will show if it's off a little bit. And depending on where you get your wraps from, hopefully they're a little bit oversized. This one's got a nice, pretty wide white border around it. So next thing we want to do is get it all lined up edge to edge, corner to corner, get it exactly where we want it. I'm not going to want any of this white border to show up. That's all going to get trimmed off. So I'm just making sure that colored part of the decal is going to be right to the edge. Then take some painter's tape. Just secure it in the middle here. So it's not going to slide around. I'm not trying to bend it, I just don't want it to move side to side. Then I'm going to put one in the center up here as well. Oop, that's the end of my tape roll. Okay, and then I'm just going to take 
I'm gonna take about six to 10 inches. And then peel off the backing, make sure we're not kinking it or definitely don't want it to stick to itself. So just be careful removing the backing. I'm just getting it started. Is that gonna stay? Okay. And then go ahead and cut off this backing. Make sure you don't cut your wrap or the board. And I saw it shift a little bit. So just double checking. And then with a squeegee and a very light hand, I'm just gonna roll this back. This is a nice thick vinyl. Some of them are a little cheaper. And then we're just gonna wipe the bubbles out of it. Don't want to press too hard. Don't want to shift it, don't want to affect the image. It can rub off. This one has um, a coating on it, so it's a little more protected. Costs a little more to do that. But even though it has a coating on it, it doesn't need a coat of poly over the top, but I am gonna put a coat of poly over, the, over this entire board again once these are applied. And we can take this off. I'm just gonna roll this back. Till we get to where it's stuck on and then loosen up the backing again. Gonna slowly unroll it while we work the bubbles out. Once I can see where it hasn't been squeegeed, I'm just gonna work from the center out. Helps to have a bright light off to the side so you can see any bubbles. If you do have any imperfections in the surface, that's where air can get trapped. And like I said, any bumps or ridges, even like where they fill in the knots on cheaper plywood, um, you can see those through the decal.
And then rather than using a big box cutter, I, I like the control that I have with just the plain blade. You can see and feel where the edge of the hole is. And then just make a slice and kind of run your run right around the edge. Kind of go at an angle. I don't want to dig into the wood. And I'm just going to go around the edge and do the same thing. Just register my knife against the wood. That stinks. I don't want a white border showing up here, so... Dang it, I can't register off of the wood. Mm. I got off a little bit and there would be some white showing. So I'm just going to take a straight edge. And cut along the printed area. Great, Brett. I'm gonna have to come back and touch that up with stain, which might not stick too good because there's poly underneath it. And then once we're sure we've got a nice clean edge, no jagged little things, then there's one more step. We'll use a heat gun on the low setting. This has a high and a low. We're not trying to melt or distort the decal. We just want to soften it up a little bit and then we're gonna dab the edges down. And that's it. Not too tough. Just make sure you got it lined up before you start peeling the backing off. Learn from my mistake.